Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. In today's video, we're welding some carbon steel parts, actually a whole bunch of them. It's a simple little part. It's a canister for a motorcycle oil filter, but there are certain acceptance criteria, the main thing being that there's no melt through allowed on certain areas of this. So there's certain areas of this thing that have a fitting on it that makes it difficult to get into. So we're gonna talk about using a large size cup for really good shielding and a long stick out. It's the Furic number 12 cup. Also, we're gonna talk about using pulse settings versus no pulse settings with filler, without filler. Let's get into it. This is a positioner that we're gonna be using today, or one of them, and we'll, we'll use another brand new one. It's a MK Cobra Turn. But just to, we'll show you a few of the features on this particular positioner a little bit later in the video. But a positioner is a great thing to have for jobs like this. Anything round where there's a lot of them, it really speeds things up. And because there are a couple of hundred of these things to do, a uh, positioner like this with a digital readout is especially handy. This is Roy Crumrine, a friend of mine. This is his shop down in Florida, and he, this is his job. I dropped in on him to film these parts. And this is a stand that Roy built for just an occasion just like this for getting your hand propped in just the right area because if you got a couple of hundred of these things to do there's no point in not being comfortable and that's kind of one of the cardinal rules of welding is get comfortable so this stand not only helps for these positioner jobs but on long runs where you want to have a steady place to slide your hand on a straight run but today we're doing a lot of these little parts and uh, positioner is the way to go this particular weld it's sort of an outside corner joint. It's a nice fit, no gap. The inside is machined, so it's perfectly round. The problem is this little washer here is pretty thin. I think it's about 38 thousandths, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, the part that it's being welded to is about twice that thick. So just getting two tacks on here is about all that's required. And rather than try to use some kind of fancy hold down mechanism, just holding them down with the finger and being really careful with a tight arc makes things go a lot faster. Now this, this particular weld is going to be done without pulse and without filler metal because Roy is washing the corners off of each member in to be used as filler metal. And because that washer, like I said, is only between 30 and 40 thousandths thick, that's you know almost a millimeter thick, uh, there's just not a lot of strength or you know meat required for this particular weld in order to have pretty much a full strength weld. And that is probably around 40 to 50 amps it took to, to, to make that weld, give or take. Now this is the key because the next weld it has to be done with no melt through. We're using a aluminum backing bar, just a piece of round stock stuck in the positioner where this piece rests flush on a big block of aluminum. Now, I've mentioned it many times before, I save all the aluminum blocks that I can get my hands on. I've got a bunch of them. got a video coming up where I'll use that as an example, making some brackets for the rod holder that I built. But, you know, having a piece of aluminum rod, uh, a round stock on hand for, the, for an occasion like this is a big, big time saver and a big benefit. It's not only a chill, but it traps argon and it prevents melt through, or if you do melt through, it won't drop through. It'll stay flush. You see that long stick out there? You can't do that with just any setup. And this is a Furic number 12. And with this particular fitting coming around there, it's necessary to have a really long stick out. Otherwise, you you know, you have to either, you, you, you could use a really small, long cup, but you'd get crappy coverage. Or a cup like this with a nice long stick out, and you could make a whole turn on it and uh, never have to stop. Now, using about somewhere close to two pulses, per second here. 2 PPS, about 20% background current, about 20% on time. Remember the goal here on this particular weld is not to melt through. So that's the reason for the low percentage on time and the low background current. And that really helped a lot. You'll also notice that no filler metal was used on that. That was per the specifications. And when you use no filler metal on a job like this, you're going to get just a little bit of undercut. But because of the thickness of the fitting versus how thin that washer was, you know, the, that was allowed for. That was actually deemed acceptable by the uh, designer, whatever. Now, if you're like me, you're probably thinking, why didn't they just go with a little bit thicker washer? 
and that way melt through wouldn't have been an issue you could use filler metal I don't know all right from here on out we're not going to use positioners but I figure I'd give you a quick look at this one before we move on to the uh, stationary welds this is a MK Cobra turn a pretty nice one digital readouts a big plus on positioners like this because you know for repeatability if you find out that you know 5.2 RPMs works the best you can dial it in at exactly 5.2 RPMs this one goes down to pretty low like 0.3 or 0.2 also it's adjustable on the angle so you can do a weld straight up or pretty much at any angle and swing it over like this and then lock it in place and it's got a, a purge capability not a through hole so you can't stick a long tube through there but it does have a purge that comes up through this hole right here all right let's take a look now at the stationary welds a really simple fixture used to locate this one I'll show you that in just a second Roy's getting a few little tacks on the corners of this little block here uh, on the other on the other fitting what he's going to do is get three tacks on three corners and then start on the corner that doesn't have the tack on it just to save a little time and when you're doing a couple of hundred of these shaving off a few seconds here and there makes a, makes for a big big deal now here's a little simple fixture just a piece of aluminum with a stud that locates the hole goes up in that fitting nothing more than that and that's really all it takes along with a, a simple hand clamp so we'll show you that one more time now also one one thing I want you to notice is the part has been cleaned it's got a little scale on it that piece of uh, carbon steel tubing has a little scale on it you know it, no not big not a big deal to weld over but certainly it welds way better if you clean it off so if you're doing a couple hundred parts like this and it's it's on you to clean them like that you got to figure that into the time and the cost and what you charge to do them it adds up big time every little operation like that like deburring or wire brushing or things like that when you're doing hundreds of parts it's a big deal it adds up quick so Roy is tackling this weld first where he's got to have the really long stick out and you can see that that nozzle going all the way up into the cup you got to be careful not to arc out on the diffuser if you're going to do something like that but he's holding a really tight arc using 045 I think might even be using 030 filler wire trying to get just about as small a weld as possible uh, because you know low amperage and doesn't want to melt through now this particular this particular joint is not as critical on melt through as the other one but still the requirement is no melt through so probably using only about maybe 60 amps here just to get a, a small a weld as possible and move along pretty pretty fast but you know still have it look decent so we'll get a few more looks a few more little dips and uh, it's very short weld here you know it's like half inch long so by the time you get started you're almost done but it's, it's uh, still a little bit of a challenge going around that thing with that little snout sticking out and uh, having to work around that thing shut up for a minute and you can watch Roy weld It might be obvious to some but we're not using any pulse current on on this particular joint not not really uh, that much of a benefit now it could be a benefit I'm not saying it couldn't but if I were doing this with pulse I would be using probably you know the rule of 33 or something like that 33 pulses a second 33 background 33 percent on time and that's fast enough that the pulse doesn't really bother your eyes all right well stick around for just a minute if you want to know more about that number 12 cup this is the number 12 cup on a 9 and 20 style torch, the small torch, the use of the small type hardware. It's got a titanium cover on it because it is breakable. If you drop it on the floor without the titanium cover, it will probably break. All right, if you have a number 17 or a 26 style torch that looks kind of like this with this large style collet and collet body, I've got an adapter kit. This is what that looks like. It's got two insulators because there are so many different type torches out there. One of these will work better than the other one pop the old insulator off pop the new adapter insulator on it's just shorter because it's got to be shorter to allow for using smaller cups and the smaller 
collet bodies and things like that. Moisten that O-ring, very critical part. Slip the uh, Furic number 12 on there with the titanium shield and you're about ready to go. Now, not everybody needs a number 12 cup and that long to stick out. Some people do. If you don't, a gas lens kit like this might be all you need. I've got these on the store as well, along with a stubby gas lens kit for 17 and 26 style large torches. So you can use a small cup and shorten up the overall length of your torch. Still get good gas shielding. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.